Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone who's tuning in to watch uh, our episode of Pro Stock today. So just a happy new year to everyone. I hope you're starting 2022 in a you know more optimistic, hopeful manner. Um, just to explain for to the viewers, um, Bill Depot is a platform. So you can look us up at uh, buildy.com. And it is a platform for everyone who has a uh, building project. Whether it's a small construction or a full-blown building construction, we are the one-stop shop for you to use if you need anything that has to do with uh, construction. And Brewstock Po is the social advocacy of Bilby. We interview uh, guests who are special, uh, certified in their field. They're, these are professionals that come to Bilby to share their um, experience their insights to people uh, for free. So this is a great forum for you to throw in questions to these experts that we have. Today, we're very excited to have the Imperial Architect Design Group. And without further ado, we want to introduce Zai to everyone. Good afternoon, Zai. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for, in for inviting me. All right. So, Zai, we have a very, very interesting uh, list of questions for you, uh, you know, as a, a design architect. Um, but before we get into that, quick background of our architect, Zai Imperial. He is a graduate of Adamson and he is a member of the United Architects of the Philippines. So, from a licensure perspective, he is one of our top professionals. So, why don't you just give us a quick background of uh, Imperial Architect and Design? Okay, so Imperial Architects Plus Design is a design company that is solely committed uh, in finding, creating design um, solutions for every diverse types of projects. All right. And Zai, how long have you been in practice you know, for uh, your design and architect uh, practice? Actually, uh, we started this company. So actually, I started my practice. Uh, my private practice since 2018 but uh, during that time the previous years pa, so I'm working with uh, other companies uh, mm -hmm. so what's your main responsibility so I know you've co-founded this uh, Imperial Architects plus design which mm -hmm. is a great concept right because mm -hmm. some more for most people what they want is you know just talk to one person and completo na kaysa sa you know, you have so many people that you need to talk to. So I think there's a lot of demand right now for, for your type of service. So what is it exactly that your, what's your responsibility uh, as an architect in this uh, company? Okay, as uh, actually my, I am the principal architect for, 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 this, for this company. So together with my wife, she's an interior designer also. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bali kami yung nagmamanage talaga ng office. Uh, so, from every aspect of, of the company talaga, kami ang nag, nagmamanage from, even for like accounting, uh, presenting of, ano, of uh, designs from the client. So, basically, very hands-on kami in terms of uh, management of this company. Which is perfect, right? Complimentary, because you're the, you're the principal architect and your wife is an interior designer, which is great, right? Because right there, um, mayroon ng complete visualization, no? Kung, kung, kung mm -hmm. ka ng, whether it's a personal home project or a business project, right? Mayroon ka ng combination right there. So, Sai, can you just walk us through how you established your brand um, in the Philippines? So uh, we started this company uh, after I worked in Singapore. So we started in early 2018. So even before before we start this company, talaga, uh, we have this mission that uh, we want that every client uh, should experience the Imperial Living. So if you can see in our Facebook hashtag Imperial Living. Uh -huh. So we want to uh, make make sure that. Uh, this imperial living uh, ma feel ng, ng client so yun so we want our clients to um, experience the whole process from the design until the turnover of the project uh, from the paper to reality so 
we want the client to you know, you know to enjoy uh, what they envision so after all they are the, no, the end users of of, of, of the projects uh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. so Zai, can you just quickly describe for our audience what is the essential elements now imperial living I, yeah that's why yun nga, yung elements na sinasabi natin na kumbaga imperial living eh. so so yun yung yun yung talagang yung pinaka ano namin na yung vision ng client na kumbaga magkakaroon ng in reality ganun oo Yes, all right. So again, thank you for that, Zaino. And again, for the viewers, sir, can you just quickly share with us how do they find you on Facebook? Uh, okay. So you can find me on Facebook uh, page, the Imperial Architects mm-hmm. uh, Design. Uh, so just search na lang sa Facebook and you will see, you will find the, no, the, the Imperial Architects. Right, okay. So, Zai, you, you walked us through, no? So again, uh, You've been practicing for several years now. Um, can you describe some of the challenges uh, that you've experienced as you were establishing your brand and your practice? And, you know, some tips for those that are just starting out, you know, uh, from your experience. Okay, actually, from yung talagang pinakamahirap na part sa pag-establish ng isang architectural office, is talaga yun nga yung... Uh, yung first step <laughs> so yun uh, the challenge just talaga is yung first step kung baga paano mo sisimulan yung yung office mo kasi kung baga wala kang uh, wala ka pang connections uh, wala ka pang I mean, tao and even for the financial aspects oo there's a lot of challenges actually uh, lahat ng aspects sa business lahat merong challenges dyan. it's just a matter of how you solve the challenges and issues. So every mistakes naman, there's a challenges and that will open ano, uh, the door for improvements and um, developments. Uh, right. And again, I think, Zai, you're very right. No? Any business will always have all sorts of challenges. Mm-hmm. Financing will always be like top-notch, right? So it, I think for those who are a keen to pursue in an architecture design practice you also need to get well versed no on the financial aspect of it because you know um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you will learn a lot talaga yes 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 right so for those who are watching who are again siguro on about to graduate from architecture you need to really also immerse yourself to understand the business aspect of this which is primarily the financial aspect of it so uh, architect zai um have you encountered issues with your design where it needs to be changed and um it's happening while construction is ongoing mm-hmm. Yes, in actually yes, in reality, uh, I think from the plans to construction, nagkakaroon ng some ano, some issues. Uh, so, hindi naman lahat ng plans is perfect. Eh. So, right. talagang nagkumbaga pagdating sa site, there will be a lot of technical uh, technical issues uh, regarding yung like in just nilang architectural uh, structural, electrical lahat ng mga ano lahat ng mga ano ng sa construction lahat ng mga parts sa construction there will be a lot of issues definitely right. will be uh, yeah so I, I think architect Zaino for those who want to pursue this field of architecture and design kailangan po nilang maghanda to your point po 80% of the time <laughs> may mga changes kailangan ng pasensya di po ba Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So, sir, um, ang isa pong tanong dito, no? it's coming in. It says, so how do you deal with it? Pag may mga ganong situation, what is, what is your recommended way of dealing with the issues? Because kung change na walang corresponding financial implication, I guess walang magre-reklamo, right? Okay lang yun. Pero once merong mga financial implications, how do you manage it? Actually, for, for, for that, uh, maybe we can go back to, to the basic. So, okay. kumbaga, we should, uh, we should uh, follow and implement the proper procedures. Okay. 
okay. uh, proper standard procedures. So, kumbaga, kung kanina yung issue, kani siya, siyang lalapitan mo, di ba? So, also, it must be well documented. Kasi, kumbaga, there are a lot of changes during the construction. So, it will be like, kumbaga, dapat naka, naka-document siya. So, para kung later on nagkaroon ng uh, reconciliation about the, um, the, um, the budget, at least we have some ano, uh, refer- reference for, for that. And also, of course, you need to ask uh, the proper consultant or authority kung sino yung uh, involved sa, sa issue. So, yun lang. Uh, Okay, so going back to your journey, no, sir, to say you were in Singapore and then mm-hmm. you moved to the Philippines to really build this practice here. Is there any mm-hmm. marked difference between how, you know, construction or just the practice is done in Singapore versus the Philippines? I think there's a difference then in terms of the, the practice. Uh, I think one is the, uh, the safety. So, Singapore kasi is very strict in terms of safety during the construction. So, well, in the Philippines naman, di ba? Kung baga, alam mo yung practice dito is bara-bara eh. So, minsan makita mo yung mga construction worker, nakachinelas, ganun. So, uh, in terms of contract uh, construction talaga, they are very strict in terms of, of safety. And also, the methodology of the constructions, uh, they are way far. Mas mas malayo yung yung methodology of constructions nila. Kasi most of ano like in Singapore, they don't have like earthquakes or any calamities. So basically they use like prefab materials ganun. Uh, so in terms naman of the designs, so I think medyo halos kaparehas lang tayo. It's just a matter of kung paano na implement yung designs kasi like in Singapore talagang they must have the budget talaga for for that for that structure I'm not sure for ito sa para ma-implement yung isang structure na yun kung bago yung vision ng ng isang structure kailangan talaga well budgeted yan compare in, in here in the in the in the Philippines medyo alam mo yung purong purong sulang eh so yun kaya minsan na limit din yung yung designs eh kasi medyo limit din yung 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 budget but not not all lah so, right. right. but and some I, meron I, mga dana and I think I, I, I you know it's safe to say that because of where we are in the country as far as construction is concerned you know we can mm-hmm. all be optimistic kasi mas marami pang pwedeng innovation na mangyari because to your point medyo behind tayo, right? So, from a business and practice standpoint, um, as we improve all of that, right? Get us to that level of a Singapore, although medyo malayo pa, maraming businesses ang pwedeng mag-thrive in this uh, current condition. Tama po ba? Yeah. Actually, uh, the Philippines talaga, there's, ano, there's a big potential talaga in, in terms of construction. Mainly is the land area, madami tayong pagtatayuan. And then also the business, once na the business is booming, the construction is booming. So, kailangan meron mga structure na, ano, kumbaga, saan mag-office, saan mag-ano yung mga tao, di ba? So, if the business, the, the, I mean, the country is booming, the construction business din is mag-booming. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, Zai, you Philippine license mo pa is it valid in Singapore or yung license mo sa Singapore ang valid sa Philippines? How does that work? No, it's it's not valid in Singapore. Oh, uh, I see. But so is the Singapore that, license valid in the Philippines or hindi din? Um, if I think if you're an ASEAN architects, pwede ka mag-practice. Uh-oh. All right. Okay. So, um, how many projects, no? At least in the Philippines, right? especially mm-hmm. nagkaroon ng pandemic 2018, so 2018 to 2019. Meron ba ka bang nakitang difference in terms of the number of projects that you were managing before the pandemic and during the pandemic? Actually, to be honest, I was surprised because, mm-hmm. mm, sabi nila, nung pumasok yung pandemic, oh no, the 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 the, the construction, the architectural offices, talagang kumbaga completely mawawalan ng projects. But we are so surprised kasi 
mas kumbaga yung yung projects mo medyo kumbaga from the percentage basis medyo tumaas yung 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 inquiries yung yung projects na pumapasok siguro i think some most most of during the lockdowns so syempre walang magawa yung mga tao so nakikita nila yung bahay i think maybe they want some improvements sa bahay nila so yun isang reason na rin yun oo so i think na uh, ang ang nag ano talaga is we're surprised kasi medyo kumbaga na maintain pa rin na maintain yung projects and may dumami pero yung iba kasi like yung mga like for construction for tenders may yun medyo na hold yun kasi bawal talaga mag work uh, sa labas during during the lockdown na ano, time okay so given that description that you just uh, had nakatulong ba yung social media sa paglago ng business nyo? Kasi you're saying na surprisingly, mm-hmm. during the lockdown, instead of it going down, tumaas. So, mm-hmm. is it social media? Is it is it online that actually helped you do that? Mm, actually, uh, uh, yung social media, well, na- nakatulong din siya. Pero kasi for in our office talaga, it's more on the, the, the referrals. Referrals, oh. So actually, yun din ang pinip- actually yun din ang ano na it's more on the uh, referrals kasi kung baga hindi mo lang like in the in the in the social media nakikita nila na oy ganda ng gawa ganon but behind that kung baga medyo hindi uh, mo kilala kung sino yung gumawa compare with the referrals talaga kung baga they have the testimony na oy si si Imperial Architects silang gumawa niyan so kumbaga from 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 dun sa nagrefer alam nila kung paano magtrabaho kami paano kami mag-implement ng, ng, ng mga projects ganun so yun okay and again i think um, that's one of the key success factors for most practices po no kasi yes pwedeng maganda yung mga picture pero mm-hmm. yung experience hindi maganda and mm-hmm. so you're right no um, referrals will always be one of the best measure yeah yeah mm-hmm. group, no in, in in this uh industry so sir can you share with us ano yung pinaka biggest project that you've had uh one of uh one of the biggest projects kasi na nagawa namin that's the yung nag-start pa lang kami uh, we have this uh project na it's a four story residence in Pasig City so and currently we're working with some uh, projects then the townhouse na dinedevelop namin so ayun yeah in development po ba ng townhouses um, do you consider that residential or a commercial project? a residential it's a residential uh, Okay. All right. So, so sir, one last question po no before we let you go. Ano po ang thoughts ninyo dun sa house build 10234? Actually, personally, it's against architecture talaga. So, I I I hindi uh, ko talaga na, 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 na read yung buong buong transcript noon pero Uh, there are some points kasi na nabasa ko na parang they nililimit nila yung practice of architecture. So, especially for the new newly grads. Yung diba, nakalagay kasi doon na they, ano lang, tatlong best lang sila pwede mag-take ng, ng board. So, parang, alam mo yun, parang may, may limits eh. So, even in even in the, ano, in, uh, in regulating the practices, There are dapat na kumbaga architects architects to architects dapat ganun eh. So parang di, mayroon mang involvement with other professionals. Not I think na hindi naman dapat uh, uh, ano bang word na pwede kong sabihin. Parang kumbaga keep hindi capable or ano basta kumbaga hindi angkop doon sa professions. So yung yung ganun. Parang yun nga the bottom line is they they limit nililimit nila yung practice of Uh, architecture here in the in the Philippines. Uh, okay, so I guess marami pa pong pwedeng mapag-usapan tungkol dito sa build po na ito, no? Because to your point, you graduated. Yes, you need to get, uh, you need to pass the board, but mm-hmm. why limit it? Whereas in other fields, hindi naman, wala namang ganun klase. Yes, yes. Uh, so of course, syempre kung ganun, 
mababawasan at mababawasan na yung numbers of architects here in the Philippines. So, actually the UAP talaga is pushing is pushing na dumami yung yung numbers of architects. Kasi especially in the in like in the building officials, minsan ang nagche-check ng nagche-check ng architecture plans is engineer. So, parang 'di ba? Bakit ang engineer ang nagche-check? So, it's supposed to be the architect should check the architecture plans. Like mm-hmm. electrical plans, the electrical engineer should check the electrical plans. Parang ganoon, 'di ba? So, architects architect to architect parang ganoon. Mm-hmm. Engineers to engineers. Uh-oh. Right. So again, Thank you po no architect side mm-hmm. for spending time with me. Mm-hmm. So for those who are watching us and would like to know more about uh, Imperial Architect Plus Design, uh, please search them on Facebook. And again, they have uh, the, their main source of uh, advertisement is referral. So um, you can validate for yourself not just the actual project but the relationship and the professionalism that the Imperial Group has. So, Sir, marami pong salamat for your time today and we hope that in the future we will see you again on PIL. Thank you, Bildi, for inviting me. Thank you, Ms. Nat, Sir Stilwer, and Sir Philip. And marami pong salamat. So again, for those who tune in to Pro's Talk uh, this afternoon, marami pong salamat for your time. And again, continue to uh, subscribe to all of our Bilby channels um, so that we can bring to you professionals that may help with whatever projects that you have. Again, thank you for watching.